<laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a minute. I got the wrong view, everybody. Let's get rid of that. Welcome to the show. I'm in uh, Richmond, Virginia, working a great, great comedy club this week. But one quick faux pas, leave the tiki torches at home. <laughs> Let's start the show. <laughs> <laughs> In a cabin going crazy Cause a flu that's worse than swine Swept the planet, so damn it Here we are in quarantine Hello, and welcome to Virtual Comedy Show. Here are some etiquette guidelines for Virtual Comedy Show. Please arrive 15 minutes early. Please be quiet, except for laughing. We've been a Zoom meeting civilization for more than a year. Come on, you know the drill. Just be polite. We would like to see your face as part of the audience. Let's be social, not just distant. So get comfortable, plan to laugh, but not heckle. And let's make our semi-quarantined world a bit more normal for a little while. Thanks, and enjoy the Virtual Comedy Show. Hey, everyone. It's time for the Virtual Comedy Show, starring Brad Tassel. And Steve Goody! Tonight, Brad and Steve welcome their very special guest... Brian Hicks! Live from their respective vaccinated homes. And now, please welcome... Brad Tessel! Yay! <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome. I hope I look okay. Uh, I'm in a hotel. I'm at the downtown Hilton in uh, Richmond, Virginia. Y'all Richmond, Virginia fans? Everybody in Richmond? Oh, yes. Yeah. Never been there. Last time I was here, I opened for uh, uh, Richard Belzer, oddly enough. Wow. I know. So that's that was a while ago. 1839. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So we are very excited to have Brian uh, Hicks here. He's a very funny comedian from Chicago that I remember back when he was a boy. And of course, uh, Jeff Pearson, who didn't you just do like the Grand Ole Opry stage? Yes, he did. He's not going to talk to me. That's okay. He oh, I didn't know you were talking to me. Yeah, I did it last Wednesday. Wow. You're too oh. good for us. So you might want to leave if you, after you hear my joke. <laughs> well, tell him that after his songs. After you hear my joke, <laughs> you might be like, eh, maybe not. So, okay. Well, what we've learned this week is that uh, my jokes riding in a car driving for two hours may not be as good as usual. So let's start with those now. Who's ready? <laughs> yeah. Come on, I'll go. Okay. All right, well, let's start. Joke number one, friends. Hell has frozen over. Fox News and Mitch McConnell are begging their easily manipulated cult to get the vaccine. Have you seen that? <laughs> now, this is very confusing to the uh, MAGA group who suddenly look like goldfish watching a chess match. <laughs> They're very confused. So what's happening is the Delta variant of COVID is knocking out Republicans 10 to 1 to Democrats. And right-wing pundits know that if they don't get their unvaxxed mob a stab soon, any day now, black lives could start to matter. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. That wasn't too bad. Hey, now in mean-spirited comedy, <laughs> GOP leader Kevin McCarthy wiped the Trump from his chin <laughs> and nominated five Republican congressmen to a January 6th committee. So it's a very bipartisan committee, five Republicans, which is a little like putting the raccoons in charge of who dug through the dumpster committee. Uh, one of the nominees, Indiana's Jim Banks, who took time out from doodling hearts and swastikas in his dream journal, to comment that this committee will be looking into the insurrection by forcing Democrats and the media to answer questions about why the Capitol was vulnerable to attack by the people he sent to attack it. <laughs> uh, wow, somebody's have gas. Right now. <laughs> that's, that's nice. Now this, this joke, as we zip along, an Indonesian man infected with COVID boarded a plane with his wife's negative COVID test, his wife's vaccine card, and dressed as his wife. 
<laughs> and he got on the plane, fine, they didn't question, and he would have made it all the way, but attendants got suspicious, flight I attendants, have no idea. when a woman was watching Fast and Furious 9. <laughs> <laughs> and they knew that that was a man. <laughs> No? Okay, great. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Is everything going okay? Here yeah, we go. Great. California is suing video game giant Activision. Who's seen that? Did you know that? I did not know that. that. Activision, they're suing them for sexual harassment, gender discrimination, and equal pay for women. The company, Activision, they produced Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, and Candy Crush are their main games. Uh, the lawsuit says that male employees drank on the job. This is what the male employees are doing. Drinking on the job. They would comment on women's bodies. They would talk about rape and actually touch female employees in very unwanted ways. Hmm. So a company spokesman said, hey, we don't make Grand Theft Auto. We live it. <laughs> <laughs> is that what goes on in that? No. Okay, now I have to change uh, screens. This week I have to, all my stuff is on my phone. I apologize for that. So the next joke is right here. Here we go. <laughs> do y'all know Tariq El Masoa? How do you say this, Masao? The guy from Flip or Flop. What's his name? Tariq El Masu, who knows? Howie Mandel. No. From <laughs> <laughs> Flip or Flop. <laughs> I thought, deal, no deal, flip or flop. Okay. Let's just say Tariq El Masoa, whatever it is, he blew up at his ex-wife, Christina, on the set of Flip or Flop, their ex is now, screaming, it's called winning, right in her face. After screaming, she was a loser, and that he loved to watch her fail. Uh, one person said, you go, boy, get some tiger blood. <laughs> Charlie <laughs> Sheen. <laughs> Now, Christina Hack, who is the wife, ex-wife, is also channeling Anna Nicole Smith. She is now smoking psychedelic toad venom to reset her brain. <laughs> he is off his nut screaming, and she is smoking toad venom. Now, the two are parents of a 10-year-old and 5-year-old who just asked HGTV if Chip and Joanna were in the mood to adopt. <laughs> hey, uh, we all know that Jeff Bezos tried to shoot himself into space in a penis, <laughs> but his rocket dropped its payload prematurely, if you get my drift. Uh, the ship was called New Shepard, barely made it to the lower orbit before going limp. Uh, Bezos announced his next ship will hold up a lot longer, so wait for blast off from Viagra Voyager. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Steve? I'm going to give up. Okay. I think you did Ladies great. Gentlemen, Who thinks he did great? Yeah. I think it went okay. I'm just not. Oh, Steve, you're adding yourself. Look at you, spotlighting yourself. I'm on top of it. Buddy. Well, I, 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 are you? How are? How was your? We need to talk about this. I want to interview you for a second. Okay. You did a sleep study yeah. on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And and what did that in, entail? Well, I forgot to study for my study, so it didn't go that well. <laughs> Anybody's got sleep issues, and yeah, I love chatting about this. Um, they 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 wire you with a thousand electrodes, and they put you to bed, and they say sleep. <laughs> so I lie there and try to rememorize Alice's restaurant for four hours. And I got pretty good. I was actually, I think I had it. Did you sleep at all? A little bit. Yeah, well, here's the sleep. point. You're there because you're not sleeping. What makes them think you're going to freaking sleep at all? I don't understand. <laughs> it's just a quick 5,000 for them. I don't get it. <laughs> no kidding. I think I made the mistake. They said, uh, um, we got to do this through insurance, but insurance, your, your deductible isn't going to cover this. So here's the amount. Is that okay? And I said, well, it's not okay, but it's what I agreed to. <laughs> I think that irritated them and they were not very nice to me the rest of the time. They weren't very nice to you and you never slept. And they said, look, you ain't sleeping. Shut up. I expect some room service for that sort of scratch. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I hope you I hope you start sleeping because uh, Thank you. I, think I might you're... during. I almost nodded off during your monologue, so yeah, I'm we're making progress. Say, everybody else was asleep. You right. still awake, so that shows that you are not sleeping well. Thank you, Brad. Somniac, take over. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you out of here. Hi, everybody. Hey, hey, it's geez. time for our weekly top ten list. We've been doing this is our 64th of these since this pandemic started. I've been filling in for Letterman, who's been you know missing for six years. Uh, and so let's let's keep it going. Keep the class of this show top notch. Our, our category. Oh, it's just so appropriate because the Olympics, are, Summer Olympics, are starting tomorrow. These are the top ten new Olympic events that Americans expect to dominate. All right. Express some enthusiasm. There you go. All right. These top ten new Olympic events that Americans expect to dominate. Number ten. Synchronized swearing. Yeah. 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 Number nine, hungry, hungry Olympic hippos. <laughs> Which leads me directly to number eight, the Americans will dominate, pie eating contest. <laughs> I think we've got that one. Number seven, beached whale volleyball. <laughs> I tend to eat a lot, I think that's my point. All right, number six, Uphill skiing. Actually, that's for the Winter Olympics. Never mind. Number five. Hundred yard dash from a scary vaccine. <laughs> Number four. Pin the tail on the anti-vaxxer. Guess what's in that pin? <laughs> Number three. High dive into reality. Fox viewers only. Nah. <laughs> These are the top 10 new Olympic events that Americans expect to dominate. Number two, rifle shooting. No permit required. Did it already pop up there? I'm behind myself. Great. Okay. <laughs> and the number one new Olympic event that Americans expect to dominate, the hurdle of running really fast after smoking some weed. Sponsored by Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Doritos is not vegetarian. Did you know that? I I didn't know that, and either before I knew it or after, I don't see why that's relevant. It's it, they use they use uh, uh, Jeez. pigs. No, it's it's got pork in it. Oh man! Yeah, Doritos Fine. have pork in it. So if anybody right. eats pork, just, I know I'm, I have no. <laughs> I know, so so Steve, why don't you do us a favor because uh, you know Jeff so well? Why don't you uh, oh, yeah. introduce well, our that's... incredible. Let's Pearson. add him to the spotlight here. This is my good friend, Jeff Pearson, everybody. Hey, Jeff. Some of you know Jeff. Some of you may not know Jeff. I'm going to take Brad out of this. It'll just be me. Hi. Good luck. Bye, Brad. Bye, Brad. Uh, here's what Jeff told me to say. Jeff <laughs> is the greatest songwriter I've ever known. <laughs> oh, what do you actually? He's had songs cut by Barbara Mandrell, the Oak Ridge Boys, Hank Williams Jr., Chris Young, Ricky Van Shelton, Paulette Carlson of Highway 100, 101. And then on Tuesday, <laughs> and over 50 gospel artists, he just played the Grand Old Opry last week. That's right. He stood in the circle of wood and, and played the Grand Old Dang Opry. And he also does songwriting workshops and one-on-one -on -one songwriting sessions. And he's my predecessor as the MC at the Bluebird Cafe. He was the MC for years on Sunday nights. Please welcome the genius that is... Jeff Pearson, that's right. Yay. Well, this is my first time as part of the virtual comedy deal. And uh, I'm not a funny guy like uh, Steve. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he asked me if I could do a, a song or two. And I, I got a song. I've written a lot of love songs and a lot of fishing songs. And to me, they're kind of the same thing. Uh, nobody will pay me to fish. But uh, so I actually have a real job in the daytime. But um, this is a song about my wife. This, none of this is true, but uh, I'll just do it for you. Can we still be friends? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> My wife ain't into football or the UFC, but put a fishing pole in her hand. 
cheek and drop shot with a big cast of Carolina rig, just like Kevin Van Dam. He got a bill dance poster on the ceiling overhead. She's all about fishing, even when we're in bed. Ain't I the luckiest man alive? My best fishing buddy is my own sweet wife. My baby kisses like a large mouth bass. Gets a hold of me, she don't hold nothing back. She's like a Merc 250 with a full tank of gas. My baby kisses like a large mouth pass. <laughs> <laughs> she don't do any cardio or step class aerobics. All she likes to do is fish. But when our fishing day is through, there's something else she likes to do. The stars with a good night kiss. Yeah, the only way I know to get to my woman's heart is a hundred dollar bass pro shops gift card. And she can that look in her eyes. And I know it's gonna be another sleepless night. Large mouth bass. Lord, she's a keeper and I throw on her back. She might look as innocent as a Sunday school class. My baby kisses like a large mouth bass. <laughs> Her kind of kissing ain't for the mild manner of me. I'm pretty sure she's never heard of a church hugger peck on the cheek. <laughs> my baby kisses like a large mouth bass. And yanks all the covers off and we hit the sack. Ain't no way on earth I'm yanking them back. <laughs> yeah, my baby kisses like a large mouth bass. She's got a nine pound tongue, and my baby kisses like a large mouth bass. <laughs> Good job. Good job. F. Pearson, everybody. Yeah. That was fantastic. That Thank was you. fantastic. Thank you very yes. much. And yeah. later, you're going to help us out and do another song, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll yeah. let you know when that is. I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Jeff Paris one more time. Yay! 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 I think we had cross purposes here. <laughs> so, uh, hey, everybody. So, uh, I was going to say something very really important. Last week, uh, Patty and I, uh, who will be here soon, were at the uh, uh, Comedy Shrine in Chicago, and one of the funniest people I remember back from my past was there, and that was, okay, Steve, I'm not going to touch my thing. It was this man. Bring up Brian. Then. Oh, I got to do it? Okay, I'll do it. Since we keep fighting. Look, there he is. It's Brian Hicks, everybody. And you look a little long, actually. Now you look a little stretched out. <laughs> 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 Brian has been around for a good 30 years, even though he's 36 years old. <laughs> Hilarious. He's been on every TV show. And he's going to talk now for the next 10 minutes. Go. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for having me. That was uh, great. Um... I, uh, Brad, I, I know you're, I saw what you said, but the, your backdrop, it looks like you're in like Dr. Doolittle's library there. It's pretty, <laughs> uh, very detail oriented. I like it a lot. You know what the best thing about that is every time like the conversation dulls down, you'd be like, hey, what's that on the wall over there? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for having me. This is a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's, it's great. I didn't, I didn't really do much today. I was kind of low key. I went to the, Went to the store. I went to Kohl's. That's like my favorite store to go go to because I always seem to have Kohl's cash from the week before, so I have to spend it before the ten days. Is up. <laughs> so I was at the Kohl's today, and an interesting ha thing happened. There was a lady who was in line, an older lady, and she was complaining to the cashier about like everything, like the weather, the line, the prices, everything. And then I heard her say. She said, last week, I ate two Big Macs. I wanted to kill myself, you know? <laughs> and uh, I whispered to the guy in front of me. I was like, I haven't eaten any Big Macs, and I want to kill her. <laughs> like, come on, you're out of the line, you know? And then he whispered back, that's my mom. <laughs> and then he goes, and then he whispered, he goes, I want to kill her, too. <laughs> we actually made a pact. We're going to just meet over at the Cracker Bowl tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. We're going to meet over there, and uh, uh, we'll have some fun, I guess. That's what we'll do. <laughs> Um, I'm a married man. Uh, I have been in the business for almost 30 years. Brad. That's almost uh, accurate. Um, uh, married for um, are coming up on our 15 year anniversary. So that's pretty uh, exciting for us. 15. Years. Yeah, thanks. Woo! I don't have because my daughter's 16. So. 
I never forget an anniversary. It really is. Um, we do love each other. If you are in a relationship with someone you love, you have to tell that person that you love them, right? Because a couple things. One, it does make you feel good inside. And then two, it uh, it strengthens the relationship. You know? um, and I actually have an example. This, this was a real life experience happened. Um, I was uh, walking out of the house a few weeks ago. I thought about this in my head as I was leaving. And then I stopped myself and then I looked up to my wife at the top of the stairs and I said, hey, I love you, you know, just like that. And she liked that. And then she looked down at me and she goes, I love you more, you know. And uh, and then I said, probably, you know. <laughs> <laughs> my defense, I didn't know we were having a conversation. Okay. <laughs> I was going to go shoot some darts and I thought I was going to buy myself an hour. Um, but uh, turns out she wanted to have a fireside chat with me at that moment. Um, so you got to respect her wishes, you know. <laughs> but I, I do, I screw up like that all the time. I got, uh, I got my wife a Valentine's Day card this year and she hated it. And I was like, what's wrong? You know, and she goes, well, why don't you read it out loud? <laughs> and I looked at it and I was like, it says, uh, happy Valentine's Day. Uh, grandson, right there at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, you're she goes, you're a jerk. You didn't even read that card. And I was like, well, of course I read it. It was the only one that was left this morning. <laughs> Some older lady, which I never get credit for that, do I? No, I don't. Uh, that's what happened. Um, but, uh, but next week's her birthday. And even though I do usually screw up all the time, I think she's starting to catch on. So she came up to me this time and she made it like point blank. She so simple. She said, listen, all I want is a pedicure, right? That's she just came straight out and said it. So it made it pretty easy, right, for me, because, I mean, now I got to learn how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I got everything I need, you know. I got the gloves, gauze, belt sander. I got everything. <laughs> you know, safety first as far as I'm concerned, especially when you're dealing with your feet, you know. Sometimes those things are daggers, you know. It's just... <laughs> I'm not going to point you out, ladies. Everybody knows who you are. All I'm saying is we are about two months into sandal season. We should probably clean them up one more time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, being married is exciting. Um, traveling, doing gigs on the road is exciting. Uh, I, uh, Me and my wife, uh, here's the other thing. We, uh, we have these intellectual arguments. I don't know if anybody does, but, uh, you know, we don't, we don't fight each other. We just, whenever we can one-up the other one, we try to. And uh, I always lose for two reasons. One, because my wife in the middle argument would just change the argument, which I don't think that's fair, right? And then the second reason, uh, I never catch it because I'm not listening. And <laughs> <laughs> the second part is definitely on me, but I don't think she should be allowed to cheat in the middle of the argument either, you know? <laughs> the last one that we had, well, we were watching TV and then she fell asleep, so then I grabbed the remote and I changed the channel. And then she woke up like, I don't know, like an hour later at least, and then she looked at me and she's like confused. She goes, What happened? You know? I go, well, I go, I go I was in Shark Week. And then she goes, Well, I was only sleeping for like five minutes, you know. And I was like, honey, you were sleeping for over an hour. And she goes, uh, oh, so what you're saying is I'm not allowed to take a nap. <laughs> 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 yeah I, I was like no I, I mean, that's not what i'm saying i think what i'm saying is if you're napping you're not allowed to work the remote that's what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> if we're being honest with each other your choices they're not even that great because your last one let's remember put you to sleep right let's <laughs> yeah she thought that was pretty funny too and she said yeah well think about how boring your life would be without me and i was like well i do every day and uh, <laughs> I probably didn't need to blurt that out. I could have told that myself, I'm guessing. But, uh, but this is really cool to uh, be able to, obviously, some live shows are opening up now. And then to still be able to do the virtual shows is awesome. So thanks for having. This would be a great time for me to plug my social media stuff. Um, I'm on, uh, I have a website. It's Funny Brian Hicks. I'm on Facebook and Twitter at Funny Brian Hicks. And Instagram is the big thing now. So um follow me on instagram it's at funny brian hicks and i checked just before this virtual show started and i am uh i am 84 followers from wow. reaching 100 so 
click the button there and help me. I mean, I think we could really make some uh, some headway here today. <laughs> we have uh, we have a family. We have a beautiful family. I have an older daughter. Her name's Michaela. Obviously, she's uh, she's 15. When she was younger, she grabbed my checkbook off the table. She started running down the hallway. She's like, ah! You know? <laughs> I was like, you are just like your mother, God damn it. Like, <laughs> Here's $100 missing. How did that happen? She's got a pen hidden somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, and then we had twins. Twins, we have a boy and a girl. Uh, they're uh, they 10 years old, Jake and Jenna. Uh, Jake is, uh, Jake is, Jake's the boy. And um, Jake is uh, by far the... Uh, kindest gentlest uh 10 year old boy i've ever met seriously he really is and then jenna she's by far the biggest liar i've ever met in my life <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth, but she can't so i don't know like like i could show her a video of her walking up to jake grabbing his ipad running away and she'd be like uh yeah i don't know where you got that dad but that ain't me <laughs> 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 like, there's like a bunch of scribble writing on the wall right and i started freaking out i was like who did this you know and jenna she comes running in from the other room she's like jake did it <laughs> <laughs> it was jake i saw him i'm not supposed to say anything but it was jake right <laughs> and i was like listen uh first of all uh it looks like it says if you look real close right here it looks like it says jenna was here all right right mm -hmm. there and then on the bottom, it says uh, class of 2028. And mm -hmm. you and I both know that Jake sucks at math, and there's no way he could have figured out that math problem right there. <laughs> <laughs> and she can't help herself, though. And she's she tests me, too. Like, I'm a father, you know, and I try to be the best father I can. But I'm also a comedian. And a lot of times, those things don't cross over the way they should. And I don't always respond the way that I should on certain things. She came up to me the other day. She said, hey, Dad, I just want you to know, I'm not going to get married right away. All right. She's 10. She says she's mm -hmm. not going to get married right away. And then she said, uh, I'm going to date the guy for like five months and find out if he's a murderer or not. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know what to say. I didn't know what to say, but I wanted to be encouraging. Right. So I said, Hey, mm -hmm. listen, first of all, I think it's great that you have a plan. All right. That's for, <laughs> um, but however, you might might want to rethink that five months because if he's any good at what he does, you're probably not going to have that long. You know? <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, maybe we should cut back on the Lifetime Network for a little while. You know what I mean? Just real <laughs> go ahead on over to Nickelodeon, watch SpongeBob and SquarePants. Remember that they lift a little bit of pineapple. You see, that's fun. That's what everybody loves. That. That's, um, I don't know. Jake's a Jake's an interesting boy. He. Uh, he says things all the time. He never wants to hurt anybody's feelings, you know. I'll be like, hey, Jake, you want to take a ride to the store with me? And he, he'll he think and be like, uh, I would love to, but I am more of a stay-at-home type of kid. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to school. When he was going to school, I uh, I would always try to talk to him. And I go, hey, how was school today? And he's like, good. You know, one word answer, good. And I go, did you learn anything? And he said, well, yeah, but apparently not enough because I have to go back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He was, we were all inside for quarantine. He was playing video games. He started getting a little chubby and I would never fat shame anybody. But if you're getting a little chubby, I'll be like, hey, we should get some exercise. So I said, hey, we got to do something. We got to exercise or something. And you know what he said? He goes, hey, don't worry, dad. I downloaded an app on my iPad, six pack abs in 30 days. Yeah. <laughs> pretty sure he thought all he needed to do was download the app because he did no exercises whatsoever <laughs> I, I, I take that back he did two crunches two crunches nestle's crunches he found them and it was oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was the halloween that we had uh, so much fun but so 15 years me and my wife uh 16 years been married and 15 years we've been married um we, uh, we play this game, and if you're in a relationship, I recommend it because it keeps things fresh. It's called the Fantasy List Game. Anybody ever hear of this? It's where you uh, each come up with a list of three people. If you ever meet anyone on your list, you can hook up with them, and you can't get in trouble for it or anything. It's kind of like a hall pass or a free ride, right? So, so my wife came up with uh, Brad Pitt is on her list, uh, Matthew McConaughey, and Bon Jovi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no! I mean, I see you shaking your head, Alina. Uh, not the whole band, just John Bon Jovi. 
I, I tried to be more realistic about it, so I chose the waitress at Applebee's. Cut <laughs> 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 my hair. <laughs> Oddly enough, I had Bon Jovi on my list too. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been great. I'm going to read this to you uh, before I go. This is a text message I got from my wife. Uh, I saved it because I thought it was funny. And you should just know that she's by far, she's the funniest person in my household. So um, this was, uh, I was in Grand Rapids, Michigan, I think it was. Uh, it was a Saturday night and I had two shows scheduled later that night. She sends this to me at noon. She said, uh, here it is. She said, I hope your shows got canceled and you're on your way home. <laughs> <laughs> Because she's so supportive of my comedy career, you know, she wants to <laughs> succeed. She said, uh, all the kids are acting up, nobody's listening, right? So now I get it. I'm far away. She's by herself. It's hard when you're a mother or a parent taking care of the kids by yourself. So I wanted to be sensitive and I wanted to say the right thing. I said, uh, sorry to hear that. If it makes you feel any better, I love you. And would love to see your breast when I get home. <laughs> I did say that. <laughs> <laughs> goes, no that doesn't help at all <laughs> she said by the way i'm driving so jenna has been texting and relaying the message <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> i said hi sweetie daddy's an idiot <laughs> that is it, everybody. thank you so much for having me this is really cool to be, so I wow, let's have it for brian hicks everybody <laughs> so, yeah. i want to know by the way if they google brian hicks Throw comedian at the end because then it's all you. If they put Brian Hicks, there's some other people named Brian Hicks that come up too. So, uh, yeah. comedian. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Funny Brian Hicks. That's what funny I mean. Brian. Brian Hicks. Just funny Brian Hicks. Yeah. Or not so funny Brian Hicks. You get other guys. That actually, actually, I think if you type in uh, not so funny Brian Hicks, that'll come up me too. Yeah. <laughs> by, the way, by the way, you you mentioned that uh, Bon Jovi is on your list of people to sleep with. Unlike your wife, though, yours is the entire band. That's exactly right. <laughs> well, we lived together for a little while. Let's hear it again, Mr. Uh, Brian. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, Brian, out of here. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know uh, it has been a weird week. Uh, I'm, I'm just so exhausted and I got to tell you that, uh, I, the, I want to talk about this for a second. Uh, the little bit of power that people like to have over you sometime. I was reminded I was at, uh, I was at, uh, uh, what's that, what's that, uh, what's the plate, the Chicago chocolate place? Waffle house. No, Patty. Hey. <laughs> Dear Deli. Dear Deli. Um. I remember, because I just remembered this, because I had a woman that wouldn't give me, I went to McDonald's and they wouldn't put tomato on my fish uh, the other day. And it reminded me I was at Girardelli's uh, in the middle of winter one time. And I walked up to the counter and I said to the young lady, I said, I'd like a hot chocolate, please. She goes, great. And I said, I would like, I would like whipped cream and I would like marshmallows. And she goes, no. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, you can't have both. And I said, well, I will pay what you like for the other one. And she said, no, you can't have marshmallows and whipped cream. And I said, okay, I'd like to reorder. I would like to buy two hot chocolates. Give me two. I would like one with marshmallows and one with whipped cream. And she said, no. And I said, why not? She goes, because I know you're going to move the marshmallows onto the cream. <laughs> I walked out with no hot chocolates on that day. And that girl taught me a lesson. And what reminds me of that is that we have, uh, well, you're, no, you're going to bring, what? Go ahead. I have a reason for this. You know, you know, there's pork in the, in the marshmallows. Yes. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say. So, well, that just screwed up my intro. I was going to bring up Patty with a concept there. Instead, I'm just going to screw it all and say, ladies and gentlemen, bring up Patty. It's Yay, Patty. It's Patty. She's in a restroom sitting on a toilet. Yeah. I know. Okay. If, 
If this looks like a proof of life video, that's because it is. I'm on the road with my 17 year old son and I'm not gonna make it. I'm in the laundry room of my hotel. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I am. My my son is 17 and he is brilliant and he is smart and there are people walking by in the hallway and I'm waving at them. Um, and I just, I want him to see all the opportunities. And I think the comics on this show will appreciate this. We started in Portland, Maine, went down to Boston, then to Providence, Rhode Island, New York, Princeton Junction, which is Princeton, New Jersey, and I am now in Philadelphia. There is no comedy club booker or any of those one-nighters that ever could book a route like I did. I just want you to know that right now. I've been on the road since Sunday. Hold on, let me just do this. This is the kind of campus that we've been visiting. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Is that you, Penn? That is Princeton. That's my son, by the way. Not actually behind me, but that, no, that's Princeton. We're gonna, yes, we're gonna visit you, Penn. Um, but here's the thing about, one, traveling with a 17-year-old boy who doesn't like to make choices. Hey, sweetie, how much time do you wanna spend in New York? I don't know, let's see. No, we can't just see how much time we're gonna spend in New York. That's not how it works. You either wanna spend one or two nights there or you don't. Because here's the thing, when you go online and try to book a hotel room, if you wanna go cheap, you can feel the bed bugs crawling up your body. I can't do, we'll see. Hi, how's everyone doing tonight? I'm melting, that's what we're saying. <laughs> Okay, so here's the thing. Even the people, and I think everyone knows this, and I apologize to all of our East Coasters. They know that they're jerks. And I almost use a different <laughs> word, but I don't know who's watching. It's a different word. It's a different word. They don't even smile. And here's the thing. If you make eye contact, they're like, what are you looking at? I don't know. I'm just looking, and I happen to make eye contact with you. And I want to look away, but now I can't, because now we're talking. I can't. What the? Okay. <laughs> The other thing is there are, okay, the instructions for travel are not specific. Like if you walk into the Port Authority, there are no signs that say this way to Subway. It says, here are the buses, here are the bathrooms. Nothing says Subway. And then when you ask about it, everyone's like, well, they're that way, of course. No, it's not of course. You know that. I don't know that. And I just missed my train. I'm fine. And here's the other thing. <laughs> you know what the problem is? Is that we, my husband and I did too much to make everything seem magical to these boys that you know where it started santa claus they think that anything can happen you know what it can't it can't all happen i can't do it all hi i'm in a laundry room <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna lose my mind i was that enough time it's really hot in here i'm super sweaty i'm being held hot hold on Patty, i want you to know <laughs> i've seen you melt before but you have to add travel and a teenager to really melt. That oh was my God. So let's, do, let's pause for a second. Okay, yes. You're in Philadelphia. You're in the hotel. That's the laundry room. Yes, it is. How many colleges have you visited so far? Okay. We did Bowdoin College, Harvard, Tufts, Wait. Uh, Emerson College. By the way, we did Emerson. I'm cheating by saying Emerson College and Suffolk because they're just in Boston, like on the, like on Bob's Road. I don't know. I, I think it's whatever, on uh, some wharf. And then uh, we did Brown University, which by the way, also I may or may not have crashed a scooter, which also led to my saving the entire trip. But then I ruined the entire trip with our car rental out of a train station. Different story, much longer. But yes, I rented one of those scooters. And if I hadn't learned how to use it before Griffin woke up, by the way, he's waking up at 10 in the morning. How the hell am I supposed to get across the entire eastern seaboard <laughs> in five days if you're gonna get up after 10? I'm fine. Why? I'm well, Fine. Why, why aren't you waking him up early in the morning? I, I, I don't, you know what, There's, there comes this balancing act of how much fighting do I want to do at the beginning of the day and is it going to last, right? <laughs> so I just, yeah, I'm not, it's, we, <laughs> I'm fine. Is he a senior? He's going to be a senior and he's brilliant. He's going to be a senior. So now Bowden is beautiful. Did you like that? He yeah. didn't. It, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's three hours of Boston. He's not going to go to Bowdoin. But I wanted him to find out what it was like. It's a beautiful campus with really unique programs. And I told him that 40% of the students study abroad. And he goes, well, that means this place sucks. Okay. <laughs> well, you're <laughs> dumb, I mean, at all these. So you went to Emerson and Harvard, and you're going to go to UPenn tomorrow? UPenn and Swarthmore. We've been, oh, we also went to Wesleyan. We went to, which is my husband's idea, which is what cost me an extra hundred dollars in a rental car and an entire night. Because okay, for anyone who's ever rented a car, have you ever been someplace where you couldn't return it after hours? Anyone? 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 Can't you just return it with a slot? No, no, no. And then they, hi, sorry, I'm doing a show. I'm just, I'm just a little <laughs> concerned that you're driving Elena to drink. 
Are you okay? <laughs> no. So here's the thing. You, so they didn't tell me. I told them I was catching the 1030 train that night. Yeah. And they didn't say, oh, you won't be able to do that because we close at 7 and you can't return the car after hours. So we get to the train station and it says, take the car to Tweed Airport. <laughs> Tweed Airport is closed in New Haven. I'm fine. Oh, oh, Yale. I forgot New Haven. I was in New Haven. Yeah. I've been I've been to that airport and rented a car there. And, uh, and I like New Haven, but we weren't that big on Harvard. So is he a Harvard liker? No, we don't. We didn't like Harvard. Uh, I think he liked... Uh, he liked Columbia the most. I don't want to go to New York. Don't make me visit New York. Uh, how no. old is Sarah Lawrence? Ooh, that's interesting. It's in Brownsville, 30 minutes north of New York. Yeah, I didn't have that kind of time. That means a rental car. I've had problems <laughs> with rental cars. Take a train. <laughs> Take a train. Okay, okay. I'm going to intervene here. Um, Patty, you have successfully made Brad look low-key. <laughs> hey, I'm pretty. I'm pretty, low key. I'm pretty low key this show. So yeah, you are. Well, you know what? I surely think he's headed for Devry in <laughs> <laughs> That's Patty Vasquez, everybody. She's gonna go have a break. All right, Steve. Let's bring Jeff back up and let's uh, do another song. I think that's, that's a great idea. If I could find him, I know he's here somewhere. Oh, there he is. Hang on. Hey, everybody. It's Jeff. Jeff Pierce, hey. everybody. Hey, thank you. Yay. You hear the guitar okay? Pretty good. Yeah. Close enough. I'm a sort of. Well, it's hotter than hell. I'm sweating like a pig. I know there's something ice cold in the cooler calling me to take a little swig. But I gotta say no. Yeah, and I'm doing my best. To lower my cholesterol, lose a little weight like the doctor said. What the doctor said is still ringing in my ear. Don't think about beer. <laughs> <laughs> so I ain't gonna let no brewski cross my mind no Guinness Foster's Heineken or Bud or Corona with a lime I'm gonna <laughs> think about a largemouth bass yeah I'm going fishing in the dark ain't gonna think about Coors or Michelob Light or PBRs <laughs> My doctors made it more than perfectly clear. Don't think about beer. <laughs> well, how in the hell do you not think about beer when you're told, well, don't think about beer? <laughs> TV ad and billboard sign is trying to draw me near. So I wrote an affirmation on some sticky notes and stuck them on my bathroom mirror. <laughs> Don't think about beer. 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 Well, the good news is I'm losing some weight. Drinking V8 juice, organic apple cider, and green Gatorade. Still, it doesn't feel right when it's 100 degrees. And everybody's got a cold one in their hand, everybody but me. <laughs> but if I'm ever gonna see this beer gut disappear, gonna take a lot more than just blood, sweat, and tears. Only one way to face a hot summer day with no fear. Can you guess what the next line is? <laughs> Don't think, don't, think about about don't think about beer. 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 Don't even think about beer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm thinking about beer. Uh, that was That's great. Yeah. Thank you. So let's hear it for Jeff Pearson, everybody. Uh, that was fantastic. By the way, everybody, uh, notice there's a there's a thing in the background. So uh, I want to ask everybody to do one favor for me. Let's hear it for Brian Hicks, everybody. First, he was fantastic. Uh, let's, 
Get Patty uh, some sort of uh, Vicodin or something. Not Vicodin. <laughs> Valium? What are you on? Valium? Maybe a little Valium. And maybe somebody, you know, break in their room at 6 a.m. and wake that kid up. I think that's a good <laughs> So, uh, and if you get a chance, uh, anybody watching out there on Facebook and you want to, go to virtualcomedyshow.com and click Donate to the Comedians, and we will uh, separate this money between all of us and uh, maybe get Patty the medication she needs. Uh, <laughs> possible. So, and of course, Steve Goody. Let's hear it for Steve Goody. Hey, Steve. Yeah. I do want you to know that uh, since Brian uh, was killing, uh, I wrote the, uh, uh, can you see? I, oh, you can't see it. Wait a minute. I no, wrote, it's magic. It's my, no. I wrote, look, that's my. I wrote the worst joke of the week while Brian was talking. So that's going to be. So, uh, so I was laughing and writing. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The worst joke of the week, and then the Thursday song, and then goodbye Facebook, and we'll talk to everybody else for a few minutes. Here we go. I just wrote this a minute ago. Kid Rock, who looks like a cosplayer. After three weeks in a Mandalorian costume smells. <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah. Is sure. using uh, homophobic slurs again. And he says he's doing it because he has a lot of gay friends. No. Yeah. No. Oh, yes. He says it. He's been using the F word because he has a lot of gay friends. Oddly, no gay friends have Kid Rock. <laughs> we'll see you later, everybody. Have a very merry Thursday. It's a special time of week when Thursday bells are pealing and life no longer seems so bleak. Let's open up our presents and carve our Thursday goose and wait for Father Thursday to arrive upon his moose. You know, we tried to incorporate all the wonderful family traditions that people associate with Thursday. Thursday comes but once a week, but do not shed a tear. Cause there are more than 50 Thursdays packed in every year. And every single one of them is full of mirth and glee. So stuff your face and break some wind and join the reverie. Have a very merry Thursday. Put on your orange fez and decorate the Thursday tree with milk, bone, spam, and pez. Once you've curled your mustache and donned your Thursday clothes, I'll catch you neat the mistletoe and punch you in the nose. Merry Thursday! Merry Thursday!